it's that time of year where we're making more fall dishes, more soups, and thinking about pies and pumpkin and all of that. So today I'm going to show you how I make my apple pie. I wouldn't say that making apple pie is hard, but it can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're making your own homemade crust. So today I'm gonna to show you the whole process from start to finish. I am gonna show you how I make my crust and this today is a sourdough crust. So I'm using kamut flour, so I used one and three fourths cups of white kamut flour, but if you're using all purpose flour, you will need two to two and a fourth cups of flour. So I also added a teaspoon of kosher salt, a tablespoon of sugar, and here's where the magic happens. I am adding a cup of tallow. I do buy this from Amazon and it makes this crust so flaky, but if you don't have tallow, you can definitely use coconut oil or butter. Both of those things work just as good. So I'm going to add my tallow here into my flour and salt and sugar mixture. And I'm going to take my cutter here. And if you don't have one of these, you can just use some forks or two knives. And I just cut this tallow in to my flour until it looks like crumbs. So you want it to look a little something like this, like big crumbs. You don't want to mix this up too much. So this is where the crust turns into a sourdough crust. I am adding 3 fourths cup to a cup of sourdough discard and I just put in what I feel like makes this the right consistency for my pie crust. If you don't have discard or you don't want to make your pie dough with sourdough discard, you can just add cold water here. You can add a tablespoon of water at a time until you reach the desired pie dough consistency that you are going for. You don't want this to be super wet, but you want this to come together when you mash it together with your hands into a ball. So as you can see, I'm just mashing this in together and future me knows that I did not mix this enough. So um, you don't want your hands in your dough too much because you don't want to melt um, your fat too much in this dough. But here you can see what it looks like. It all came together. Um, I do not refrigerate my dough. I know a lot of people put their dough in the refrigerator to let it sit while they're cutting their apples. And I have a really hard time working with cold dough. Um, so I just keep mine out at room temperature. So now it is time to cut my apples up for the pie. Now I use a deep dish plate for my apple pie. So if you have a regular pie plate, you may not want to use this many apples but I am using a bag and a half of the apples that I had. Now you can use whatever apples that you want. Um, I know a lot of people use Granny Smith here, but I just use the apples that I have on hand and I think I had um, mostly Gala apples that I needed to use up and maybe a few Red Delicious apples. So when I was a kid growing up, I remember watching my mom make apple pie, so that's how I learned how to make it. One of the favorite parts I remember is seeing who could make the longest apple strip <laughs> with the peeler. And I don't know if mom let us peel the apples or she peeled them and we just were excited to see if she could go all the way around the apple, but it's just a memory that I have. So I always pull out an extra bowl for all of the discard pieces that I don't want of my apple and I end up giving those to my chickens. And yes, I do know they say that apple seeds are 
not good for chickens, but I always throw them out there and I've never had a problem. I guess they know not to eat them so they don't or they don't actually bother them, I'm not sure. But I just cut my apple into four pieces and then I just cut the cores out and then I turn them sideways and I just slice them as thin as I can here. If you slice your apple slices too thick, they will not cook and they will be crunchy in your pie. So if you like crunchy apple, you may wanna leave them bigger, but as you can see, I get them pretty thin. I know they sell special tools that will peel and core and slice your apples for you. Yes, I've seen them. Yes, I think they're really cool. Yes, it makes the process so much faster than standing here and doing this, but there's a little part of me that likes to stand here and go through the process of peeling and coring and slicing the apples. And it just makes me feel like if I have the time to do this, I just enjoy the time that it takes to make this completely homemade with my hands. And maybe one day I'll get a tool like that to help me make this process even faster, but I enjoy doing it this way. I do try to work pretty quickly here because as you can see, it doesn't take long for your apples to start browning. So this isn't something that I walk away from. If I get started cutting the apples, I go ahead and get this done all at once. Now, I do think that you can put some lemon juice or something like that on your apples to keep them from browning, but I really don't worry about it. I put a lot of cinnamon in my apple pie anyway, <laughs> and that makes the apples kind of brown. Um, so if any of them turn a little bit brown, it, it doesn't bother me at all. So I'm just showing you, I think this is the last apple here. Um, it, I didn't even time this process, but it does take quite a while to cut and chop that many apples for a deep dish pie plate probably a good 15 20 minutes here so this is where i'm going to add the things to the apples that makes the pie filling nice and gooey and yummy so i added a cup of sugar you could add brown sugar if you want i've done that before it makes it very good I added a fourth of a cup of flour a tablespoon of cinnamon and i got kind of a spatula that isn't very bendy <laughs> more rigid spatula and i mix this up because you don't want to break your apples up and then i realized that i forgot vanilla so i just put a few splashes of vanilla flavoring in there mix it up again and i let this sit while i get the pie crust ready and that helps um, the juices and stuff come out of the apples i also added a little bit of salt in there just like a pinch of salt that also helps the apples release the juices. So here I'm going to cut my pie dough in half so that I have a bottom layer for my pie and a top layer for my pie. So if you're intimidated by making pies, you may want to watch my top layer and not my bottom. <laughs> it's okay though, this happens. I've been making apple pie for over 20 years and I'm usually the one that makes the apple pie for Thanksgiving every year and then I usually make one or two through the year, so I do have experience, but it's been probably almost a year since I've made a pie, and I should have mixed this dough just a little bit after sitting, um, and it probably wouldn't have done this to me, but this dough is very crumbly. If I was not seasoned in dealing with dough, I probably would have given up, <laughs> but I, I knew what to do um, to, make this dough work and thankfully this is just the bottom of my pie so nobody's even going to see this layer um, but this is just about to crumble and fall apart um, but I'm very proud of myself for staying calm and not you know giving up on the whole thing it, it did run through my head that uh, maybe I shouldn't share this but I really think that it's good to to show that, that not everything that we make in our kitchens is perfect. I, this isn't a cooking show. I'm just a woman at home cooking for her family, making meals, learning as I go. And so, yeah, this doesn't go as planned, but I'm able to fix it and make it turn out okay. So you want your bottom crust to be a little bit bigger than your pie plate. And 
I'm using a stone pie plate as well. I don't think I said that. If you're using glass, you won't have to cook yours as long as I do. Um, and I also think I failed to mention when I started cutting the apples, I put the oven on 425. But this pie plate, it takes a little bit longer to get hot and hot all the way through and it's deep dish. So I have to cook my pie quite a bit longer than maybe just a regular um, undeep dish glass pie plate. So here you see I am <laughs> trying to get this poor little bottom crust in this pie plate and I just move all the little broken pieces of pie um, of pie dough around and just kind of mash them in into a good layer that is similar and I do my best here. So it does end up turning out okay as you see in the end here when I get uh, finished fixing all of it but um, if you run into this issue you either put too much flour in your pie dough or after it sat for a little while you just need to give it another really good mix to mix the flour and, and everything in together. Um, this does happen and it just kind of depends on the humidity in your air that day. Pie dough can be very finicky. You can go to the freezer section of um, any grocery store and buy pie dough. So I have no problem doing that. I have actually done that before in a season of my life where I just did not have the time or the energy to deal with homemade pie dough. So here you can see it looks just fine and you can't even tell that I had this whole mistake <laughs> that happened to me. So once I get the bottom layer of the pie in, I go ahead and put my apples in that have been sitting for a little while with all that yummy stuff on it. And this pie plate, I, these apples fill this pie plate up pretty high. Um, if I don't fill this pie up like this, it will just kind of fall and divot in. So you always want your apple pie to be mounded up just a little bit so that when the apples cook down, you don't lose the top of your pie and it doesn't like crumble or indent in. So I just get these apples in here in an even layer and then I put a few pats of butter on the top, usually six, <laughs> one in the middle and five around the edges. And this just helps make a real yummy gooey filling of your pie on the inside. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to do this and gotten the top of my pie, the pie dough on the top on, and then I had to take it off and put this butter in because the butter makes a huge difference. So now I'm going to work on the top of my pie. And like I said, I mixed this together a little bit in the bowl because I knew I had the problem with the, the the bottom and as you can see this one turns out just fine so I was very happy to see that I didn't have any issues with this one and it goes a whole lot smoother um, so I roll the top of the pie on and then I just kind of push all the edges together and kind of seal the bottom and the top together and then I take my knife and on the second knuckle of my finger, I cut down and kind of get off all of the excess pie crust. And this makes it all even. And that way when I roll it up, I don't have all this extra thick pie crust on one side and not on the other. So this just makes it all very even. And don't worry, the excess pie crust does not go to waste. I roll this out and I cook it up. I put cinnamon and sugar on it and my family actually loves to eat the extra pie dough or yeah pie crust <laughs> that is left over and that's something that my mom did as well. She would cook that up, roll it out and put it in the oven and cook it up for us and we would enjoy that flaky pie crust. It's almost like a cracker because there's not um, any sugar, much sugar in the pie crust. So I just roll this up with my fingers and then I, you can at this point make whatever design you want to. There's some very intricate 
designs on the internet for the edges of your pies, but I always just take my finger and push in with my finger and push out with the thumb on my other hand. And I just make this, I think it's fluted maybe, I'm not sure what this is called. Um, but this is what I always do to the edges of my pies. I'm not very fancy when it comes to this part. For my apple pie, my mom always did this also. <laughs> um, I take a little bit of the extra pie dough and I roll it out and I actually cut out like the shape of an apple. I cut kind of a heart shape with a flat bottom instead of a pointy bottom. And then I cut a little leaf shape and a little stem shape and I put this on the top of my pie and that way um, I guess you know it's an apple pie but I mean once you cut into it that it kind of messes the whole thing up but it's just something special I always do you don't have to do this to your apple pie it will still be beautiful if you just cut your little steam holes in it it will still be a beautiful pie without putting an apple on the top if you don't want to go through this little step So I just place this little apple cutout on the center of my pie and I just make sure the two handles of my pie plate are on the sides and I put this in the middle and kind of make sure that it stays there and then I shape my leaf, stick it underneath that apple and then I stick the stem underneath the other side. It's not really that hard um, and I think it's really fun. Then I cut my vent holes in the pie and I always make sure that these are even with the handles. Um, and this is very important. This isn't just for looks. You need to do this so that the steam can escape from your pie. And now I'm going to make a cinnamon and sugar mixture that I will sprinkle on the top of the pie. And it just makes the pie crust really pretty and it also gives it a little bit of a crunch. Some people, I think, maybe brush um, an egg wash on their pie dough. I've never done that. I've always just put the cinnamon and sugar on here. Since an apple pie has to bake so long in the oven, use foil around the edges of my crust and then I take a piece and put on the very top to protect the top as well. Um, they also do make things that you can buy to put around your pie. Um, I've never had anything like this. Again, this is how my mom did it, so this is how I've always done it. and. I just take enough foil and cut it in half and then just kind of fold the edges together so that it stays and wrap it around the pie crust and then I take another little piece and just put um, underneath the foil I kind of tuck it in and cover the top so that it does not burn and then a little more than halfway through we will take this off so that we can actually get a brown color on our crust. So I put this in a 425 degree oven for 45 minutes and then I take the pie out and I take all the foil off and I put it back in and this is the part where 
it could take 15 minutes on your pie or I think mine took an extra um, 20, 25 minutes and you want to wait until you see your pie bubbling all the way through. I did put a baking sheet under my pie just in case that it bubbled over into the oven. If you've ever had that happen to you, you know that that is a huge mess. So here my pie is all done. It smells so good in here. The pie is beautiful and the crust is just perfectly brown. This pie definitely was not ready to be cut into yet, but I just had to cut into it to show you what it looks like. It has not set up. It needed to sit and cool for a little bit longer, but here it is. I'm just serving it with some ice cream. It's warm, it's delicious, and it's the perfect dessert for a fall day. I hope you enjoyed this video and I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you will try making your own apple pie and I hope you have a great day. Bye.